Good afternoon, everyone. This is TransConnect August 2025. I am Dr. Mohit Chaudhary, and I am accompanied with me, my colleague, Dr. Shafina, who is going to take you through this very important topic that is acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. We already covered a part of it in which we discussed about the acute transfusion reaction, and now we are discussing one by one the differential diagnosis for acute hemol acute transfusion reaction. One of them is acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. We have already discussed transfusion transmit bacterial infection. In this topic, acute hemolytic transfusion reaction, we'll be discussing about the signs and symptoms of AHTR, the pathophysiology, what is the management, the prevention, and the mitigation strategies for AHTR. So over to Dr. Shafina, who is going to take you over for this very important lecture on acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Shefina. Among the acute transfusion reactions, today I will be discussing about acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. Hemolytic transfusion reaction is the accelerated clearance or destruction of red blood cells which is associated with a transfusion event. So, this can be acute or delayed. If the hemolysis is occurring within 24 hours of transfusion, it is acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. And if the hemolysis is after 24 hours but within 28 days of transfusion, then it is delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction. The hemolytic transfusion reaction can also be classified into intravascular hemolysis and extravascular hemolysis. Intravascular hemolytic transfusion reaction. This is complement mediated and it is seen in acute hemolytic transfusion reaction and it can be precipitated by both IgM and IgG type of antibodies. So here when there is an antigen antibody reaction the classical complement pathway is getting activated leading to the production of pores over the red cell membrane and followed by the red cell lysis. So there will be liberation of the free hemoglobin into the plasma. So, when there is an excess amount of the hemoglobin or hemoglobin dimers that can lead to hemoglobinemia, it is passed or excreted through the kidney leading to hemoglobinuria and the haptoglobin hemoglobin complex, it will in enters into the reticular endothelial system and also to the hepatocyte leading to the liberation of unconjugated bilirubin and thus leading to bilirubinemia. So, in intravascular hemolytic transfusion reaction, there is hemoglobinemia, hemoglobinuria and bilirubinemia. Next is extravascular hemolytic transfusion reaction. So, this is macrophage mediated. Here, the antibodies in plasma that either fails to activate the complement or activate the complement system only up to the C3 stage. So, here the red cells are sensitized and the red cell will enter into the reticular endothelial system and where the phagocytosis of the red cell occurs by the macrophage and that will lead to the liberation of bilirubin. So, there will be hyperbilirubinemia. So, this extravascular hemolysis is seen with delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction and it is mainly of IgG type of antibody. This is a time course of different parameters in hemolysis. In intravascular hemolysis, we can see there is elevation of plasma hemoglobin then elevation of serum bilirubin and also we can see urine hemoglobin is elevated. Whereas in extravascular hemolysis, we can see there is depletion of hemoglobin after around one week and also there is raised amount of conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin. Coming to the pathophysiology of hemolytic transfusion reaction, Hemolysis is dependent on the type of antigen and antibodies involved as well as the patient or host factors. There are mainly four mechanisms are involved. They are the first one the complement system, second mechanism macrophage mediated, third one bystander hemolysis and fourth one reticulate site suppression or destruction. First one complement system. So, there is preformed antibodies in patient plasma that will recognize the antigen in transfused blood. So, there will be activation of the classical complement system. So, the C1Q of the complement system will recognize the FC domain and leading to the 
C3 cleavage and formation of membrane attack complex. This membrane attack complex will assemble on red cell surface leading to the lysis of the red cell. And along with the formation of membrane attack complex, we know there is a release of C3 and C5A, which will further promote the release of histamine and serotonin from mast cells leading to vasodilation and smooth muscle contraction. There is also release of cytokines, leukotrienes, TNF-alpha, free radicals and nitric oxide. TNF alpha is a part of early response that is it will appear within 2 hours and it has potent pro-inflammatory effects that is it can lead to fever, leukocyte activation, procoagulant activity and increased expression of large number of genes that are related to inflammation. There is release of chemokines like CX, CL8 and CCL2. These have effect on granulocytes, lymphocytes and macrophage. So all these will lead to endothelial damage and increased capillary permeability. And if the conditions is remaining untreated, that can lead to disseminated intravascular coagulation and multi-organ failure. This is the complement mediated destruction we discussed. So there is a preformed antibodies that can be IgG or IgM type in patient blood that will recognize the antigen in transfused blood and that will lead to the hemolysis that is a complement activation. So there is hemolysis and along with the complement activation there is activation of the inflammatory cells like the master cell which will lead to the release of the inflammatory mediators like the cytokines and chemokines. All these together will lead to hemoglobinemia, hemoglobinuria, renal vasoconstriction, nitric oxide scavenging and finally to acute tubular necrosis and even renal failure and disseminated intravascular coagulation. These are the cytokines uh, involved in hemolysis. So the interleukin 1, tumor necrosis factor alpha. So all these will lead to fever, hypotension and shock. Then other factors like the interleukin 6 and the chemokines. These will lead to the activation of other cells like the B cell and T cell activation. Along with that there is chemotaxis of the neutrophils and lymphocytes. So all these will together leading to an active inflammatory state. Second mechanism, role of macrophage. The immune incompatible red cells that are coated with IgG, IgA or complement. So that is the sensitized red cells that will endorse into the reticular endothelial system. So these red cells that will react with the receptors over the macrophage and leads to the engulfment or ingestion of the obstinized red cells. Sometimes the ectoenzymes that is present over the surface of the macrophage can lead to micro perforations on the red cell membrane leading to the formation of spherocytes or microspherocytes and also the toxins released from the macrophage can lead to antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. These spherocytes and microspherocytes are prone for further destruction during their subsequent passage through the spleen. So in extravascular hemolysis, there is only a minimal release of free hemoglobin and it is seen with the RH and other non-ABO antigens. Third mechanism is bystander hemolysis. So there is preformed antibodies. These antibodies will lead to the destruction of antigen negative red cells. So there is preformed antibodies that will bind to the antigen negative red cells leading to complement activation and immune hemolysis and also they can sensitize the red cell leading to the destruction of the red cell through a macrophage mediated mechanism. So this, this is found in the delayed hemolytotransfusion reaction of sickle cell disease and this is a hallmark of hyperhemolysis. Fourth mechanism, reticulocyte suppression of destruction. This is seen in severe delayed hemolytotransfusion reaction and also with hyperhemolysis. So along with the hemo immune hemolysis, there is also the suppression of erythropoiesis and also bone marrow necrosis. Coming to acute hemolytotransfusion reaction. So this is the interaction or reaction of pre-existing IgM antibodies in patient with the incompatible blood group antigens that is received through the donor. Acute hemolysis can occur during or within 24 hours of cessation of transfusion with no onset of any of the following signs and symptoms. So it can be back pain or flank pain, chills with or without rigors, epistasis, fever, impending doom, hematuria, Hypotension, it can be oliguria or anuria, pain and oozing at the IV site and renal failure. 
then along with these signs and symptoms there can be two or more of the following lab parameters that is decreased fibrinogen decreased haptoglobin elevated bilirubin elevated ldh and ast hemoglobinemia hemoglobinuria plasma discoloration and spherocytes on peripheral blood smear along with the above features in immune mediated hemolysis there will be a positive dat test and a positive elution test with an allo antibody and in non immune mediated all the serologic tests will be negative but there will be a physical cause like the thermal osmotic mechanical or chemical cause that is uh, leading to a non immune mediated hemolysis coming to the causes of hemolytic transfusion reaction the important cause accidental so it can be wrong blood in tube like because of the misidentification and poor labeling practices in institute it can be patient or product misidentification at bedside wrong component issued at blood bank or incomplete or inappropriate pre transfusion testing or it can be because of the errors associated with manual processing while issuing the units other causes of hemolytic transfusion reaction because of the emergency release of uncross matched blood because of the abo incompatible hematopoietic stem cell transplant prior to the uh, red cell transfusion or because of the passive transfusion of abo allo antibodies through the plasma like because of the platelet mismatch due to the limited inventory group a plasma that is issued during the emergency resuscitation of trauma patient or because of the immunoglobulin products like the iv ig and rh ig that may contain the allo antibodies these are the coexisting condition that may confound clinical and laboratory presentation of hemolytic transfusion reaction so they are the patient of autoimmune hemolytic anemia g6pd deficiency sickle cell disease drug induced hemolysis patient of sepsis or active bleeding the patient underwent mechanical thrombectomy or hematoma resorption next complication of hemolytic transfusion reaction first one hypotension and shock so there is complement system activation that will lead to the activation of kinin pathway and will cause the release of bradykinin and we know the bradykinin will lead to hypotension and then to shock along with that the inflammatory factors like the tnf alpha and the chemokines and cytokines will also lead to hypotension and shock second complication is disseminated intravascular coagulation so in the complement activation there is release of the pro inflammatory cytokines and that will lead to the dic the challenging part is it is difficult to distinguish the dic of hemolytic transfusion reaction from other causes of coagulopathy like in massive transfusion and liver disease the third complication is renal failure because in dic that will lead to the formation of thrombus in renal arterioles and also the free hemoglobin as a part of hemolysis can cause renal injury leading to pigment nephropathy there are chances for respiratory complications so there is anaphylatoxins like the c3 and c5a which is causing the release of histamine leading to bronchoconstriction and dyspnea in patient and also aggressive hydration during resuscitation of hemolysis can lead to pulmonary edema in sickle cell disease patient there is a rapid drop of hemoglobin because of the hemolysis that will exacerbate the pre existing sickle cell condition leading to acute chest syndrome hepatic dysfunction pulmonary hypertension and renal failure coming to the investigation and management at the bedside immediately stop the transfusion and verify the patient and product identifier and report incident then maintain an iv access by flushing with saline draw a post transfusion sample and send it to the blood bank along with the blood bag then the primary team can order the additional baseline laboratory tests like the cbc ldh peripheral smear hemoglobin electrophoresis and coagulation studies there should be an inter consultation with the renal and intensive care specialist for the further management of the patient at the blood bank we have to visually inspect the patient sample and the blood bag for hemolysis then we should repeat the direct antiglobin test and abrh then we can go ahead with antibody screen in both pre and post transfusion sample and also we should check the elevate for any antibodies we can type the units for the antigen and also we should repeat the cross match with pre and post transfusion samples also we can further investigate on the other non immune causes like we can order for gram stain and culture to rule out infection 
and we can investigate uh, investigate on the transfusion technique and the blood storage conditions that is used at the bedside and also we should check the blood bag and tubing and segments for hemolysis management of acute hemolytic transfusion reaction early recognition and management of reaction is very crucial because severity is related to volume and rate of infusion of incompatible red cells so immediately stop the transfusion keep the iv lines patent by flushing with normal saline fluid resuscitation and pressure support is uh, needed in cases of hypotension monitor the input output chart closely then hydration is important because it will prevent the renal impairment so maintain the urine output more than 100 ml per hour but also we should avoid fluid overload especially in patients with impaired cardiac or renal failure in severe reaction diuresis like uh, mannitol and furosemide can be tried to improve renal function if the diuretic therapy fails we can proceed with hemodialysis alkalinization of urine to maintain ph more than 7.5 anticoagulants like heparin can be used but it has the potential for hemorrhage in dac we can consider antithrombin ffp fibrinogen and platelet can be used in case of severe bleeding in dac in life threatening conditions we can proceed with red cell exchange transfusion with the compatible prc unit to decrease the load of incompatible cells because this is coming under aswa category 3 grade 2c Now there are some newer modalities that is the use of drugs that can inhibit the complement cascade so one example is eclizumab which is a monoclonal antibody that blocks the cleavage of complement C5 this can be used in the early stages of hemolytic transfusion reaction so hydration diuretics and alkalinization of urine is important to prevent renal impairment then in severe dac complication we should maintain the platelet count more than 20000 inr more than 2 and fibrinogen more than 100 mg per deciliter we can also use glucocorticoids and iv ag to prevent the further hemolysis coming to the prevention of acute hemolytic transfusion reaction there should be proper institutional policies and procedures to prevent errors so proper identification of patient and properly label sample are important Now we have technology based products like handheld barcode scanners and radio frequency identification devices like this so this is the RFID device and this is the tag of RFID that is sticked on product Continuing preventive measures the compatibility testing at blood bank should be performed by appropriate and sensitive techniques we can advise for prophylactic red cell antigen matching for hemoglobinopathy patients to prevent aluminization next genotyping assays they are very good but they are not cost effective then all the transfusion must be closely monitored and if there is a reaction the time between the suspicion of reaction investigation and treatment should be as short as possible and in case of ab incompatible transplants the proper blood product should be selected to reduce the graft directed antibodies now the mitigation strategies so if the institute have to use ab incompatible platelets due to the low inventory then we can try with volume reduction or screen the unit to provide low titer plasma containing product or we can dilute the product or the platelet with platelet additive solution then there should be hemo vigilance reporting in the institutes and the institutes conduct regular symposium training and guidelines for lab technician and nurses and if an error occurs we should follow it up with root cause analysis and corrective and preventive action programs thank you for watching uh, share your feedbacks in comment section thank you